Hi there and welcome back to Big Fish Little Fish Aquatics. It has been a while since I last put a video on my channel, um, but I'm back to give you a fish room tour, let you see how things are going on here in my little fish room. Uh, so hopefully you stick around and enjoy the video. So first up on the tour is my three small aquariums here. There's been a few changes since I've last shown these tanks, so let's just get into it. So this tank, the last time, if anyone has been watching my videos, the last time you saw this tank, this was home to my wood catfish. They've been moved out to another aquarium, but in here is my adult celestial pearl danios. I've uh, started to breed them again. I've put the lights on a lot brighter than usual, just so I can get some footage. Um, and it seems to have spooked everything um, in here, so we'll see how uh, how much footage we can get of these fish but in here is my celestial pearl danios there's about seven adults in here about two or three males to four females and uh, they're in here with some uh, blue dream sh shrimp as well just to help with the cleanup so if, we, if i can zoom in here you might be able to see one of the males just down there just hiding amongst the plants Um, usually they're swimming around all over the aquarium but yeah they seem to be really spooked and they're hiding underneath the filter actually not filter sorry the heater at the back if I can zoom in these are a brilliant little fish they don't get very big at all and um, they're quite quite prolific when it comes to breeding you see there's a gravid female back there and yeah they've been they've I've moved them back into this aquarium for probably about six months and I started breeding them again and that's essentially what this uh, little Tupperware box is all for it's essentially so I can gather the eggs uh, so I'll quickly show you how I do that so essentially you can see in here it's just a Tupperware box food food grade and inside there is java moss and then that's just a pleco cave which is weighing it down to keep it in there there may be eggs in there there may not have been i haven't uh, gathered any eggs from them uh, today or for the past couple of days and i'll come on to what how everything's going in terms of the actual babies and fry and things like that but essentially what i do is i just leave this box in here and every day they spawn um but the, the challenge is compared to other egg layers such as neon tetra and things like that is uh, they lay a smaller amount of eggs so uh, you have to gather a lot of eggs and it can be quite time consuming compared to other types of egg laying species uh, to, to get the uh, fry to grow out but essentially all I do I'll just pop my hand in and pick up the box and then just pour out some of the excess water I'll just pop it on top here and I'll just grab the things I use to actually find the eggs okay so to harvest the eggs all I use really is a syringe um, and a torch to help me find them I just take the weight out and the torch essentially helps me find the eggs themselves so hopefully you can see this if not I'll try my best to show you essentially what they do is they scatter the eggs into the java moss and then all you have to do is and you ideally would want to do this um, a couple of hours after sunrise because that's a, or when you turn your lights on should I say if you're aquarium um, as that's when they spawn and there's, there's a few here so I'll get the camera off the tripod in a second and show you um, and if you go in before the parents can get in and eat the eggs essentially um, you should be able to then go and siphon out actually there's a there's a fry in here as well it looks like um, I know it's a shrimplet so we sort we sort that out as well um, so let me just get my camera off the tripod and show you these eggs So um, you can get a real feel for how small 
uh, their eggs are uh, when I use the macro lens to actually capture them. Um, so I've just caught out a load of them rather than sharing you watch me siphon them out uh, one by one. Uh, I've got about 25 today um, and this is late in the day. Uh, my best haul so far has been getting about 80 in a day um, and you'll see the fruits of that labor in a moment um, so yeah so once I've done that essentially all I do is I pop my weight back in make sure it's holding down a bit of the java moss so that it doesn't just rise up because if the parents can get underneath it they will uh, eat, eat the eggs I've actually stopped harvesting to be honest because I've got so many fry growing out at the moment in, the t in their grow out tank that it would just be too much really to keep keep going but I leave it in here anyway just so the parents get used to it oh, it's got on a moss ball yeah and I'll show you the fry so we're going to skip this middle tank and come to the end tank which is where I've got um, all of the celestial pill down here fry they're in here with some bloody mary shrimp um, I'm not going to lie the shrimp are not um, <laughs> as uh, colourful or as rich in red as I would like um, but they do their job which is to keep the aquarium clean while I am um, mass feeding uh, young young fish and you can probably just catch a few of them darting as a blur in the screen shot here and I might need to get some macro shots on them but if you can see just about here and then my finger there's one there they're essentially all through this tank and what I do is I pop the eggs into here and you can see in here are some some of the young fry growing out swimming around amongst the moss here there's probably about 15 in this little box here which and you can start to get a feel now why I don't want to harvest any more eggs at the minute so just in this little box here there's about 15 um, and the eggs essentially go into the bottom and, and the only small small shrimp can actually get in here and then I catch them out as they grow they actually do just keep on growing so they just eat the food that um, I feed the young fry um, and I found that having the shrimp in there the shrimplets should I say they're young shrimp they keep the eggs clean um, so I don't have to worry too much about methylene blue or anything like that treating the eggs the shrimp do my do the work for me and then I get a really successful hatch rate so you can see in here there's about 15 going out in here and if you look in the tank all the way back there's loads of them swimming around if I was to guess I'd say there's about 60 in here at the moment um, but I'd wait but to be honest I think there's a, a whole lot more um, so I'm actually stopped harvesting I'm gonna grow these all out make sure I get them all healthy um, and thriving into a good size before I move them on um, to their to their final grow out tank and this is the second batch I've collected essentially um, from my adults in here and uh, the first batch I only gathered about 20 eggs and of those 20 eggs I've got 11 fry which have grown out so they've gone through this stage and then I've moved them on to uh, another tank and I'll show you them now. So up here is the 11 older Celestial Pill Danio fry um, and I'm gonna have to apologize now I am no no master of planted aquariums these are just Anubias floating in the in the water and um, so you can see in here I hope it will pick them up got a few lovely looking Celestia Pildanios growing out and um, they're probably about half the size of the adults at this point these are I would say two months old and um, they're living in here with uh, my blue sapphire shrimp and if I can zoom in on them I probably won't be able to though but let's see if we can um, I've actually noticed with a, a few of these, there's probably two or three, they've actually started to develop long fins, uh, which is quite interesting. So I'm going to keep an eye on these. I have no intention of selling them on um, in, as such a small group. I'll probably wait till I've got a good batch before I sell them on. Um, but you can see this one here. Let's see if I can zoom in. Some really lovely long fins. 
so she might be uh, one of the fish that I keep just to see if we can do something with that to get a, a line a line of long fin celestial pildanios we'll see what they how she does um, but yeah so there's 11 in here they're doing really well I feed them twice a day at this size um, and they just get the same food that the adults get which is crushed up flake uh, small nano pellets um, and cyclops and daphnia um, so they, yeah, they have a they have a ball and the shrimp just clean up after them we'll just quickly come back to uh, the fry tank so in terms of the fry what I'm feeding them to get them up to good size uh, they start off on Hikari's uh, tropical first bites once they um, put on a bit of size when you can actually see that they're a celestial pildanio and not just a line um, that's when I'll start giving them some baby brine shrimp uh, and continue feeding first bites and then slowly wean them onto uh, the same diet as, as the adults. So coming back uh, to this middle tank this is my vampire crab tank so this aquarium is set up as like a paludarium um, less than a third of water in the aquarium and if I just zoom out a little I might have to stand back um, you can see you know um, probably about a third of the aquarium filled with water in terms of depth as well run with just an air filter and then underneath the substrate and all the plant work at the back um, is essentially a filtration media uh, which just helps with beneficial bacteria and things like that. Mm. Uh, the crabs actually spend hardly any time in in the water. There's one at the back you can might be able to see possibly no it just scurried away as soon as it saw the camera coming um, but otherwise I've got some blue sapphire shrimp that have I think I accidentally transferred one or two shrimplets in uh, when I was moving some plants around and they seem to have thrived the crabs don't seem to bother them or if they do they don't dent their numbers in any way shape or form so if you want to see the obviously the vampire crabs we need to actually take the lid off because they're on the land areas of the aquarium just move the light out the way Um, oh, they've all ran for it. There's loads in here. They they seem to be doing really well. And I did uh, set a few when I um, first bred them. They didn't seem to be too popular, th though, at least in my area. Um, so I haven't re-pushed trying to sell them. But here's a young female here. Just down there she's going really fast and um, let's see if we can catch a male they're normally at the back there's a female here on this coconut shell um, and you can tell they're females because really the, oh, they're so quick uh, the size of the claws is one one key giveaway um, yeah so in terms of sexing claws males are smaller no male, sorry. Uh, males are larger, females are smaller, um, and then the underside of the carapace, which is called the apron, um, the females have a thicker apron uh, compared to the males thinner. Um, what this is here is this is a bit of courgette, so any leftovers from my uh, plecos essentially go to the crabs, so they're great scavengers for um, herbivorous uh, fish and probably carnivorous fish as well but you can see they're all just hiding around if I zoom in here one thing I didn't realize that they did prior to getting these um, is they burrow so that is a hole and inside that hole is a little crab um, and those holes are riddled all around so if I look down here let me get my torch it might be easier to see so you look down there a little hole up there living in uh, let's see if we can find any others. There's a crab there, which is just coming out of the hole, actually. You can just see its legs moving. See if I can... Let's 
no not gonna get any good shots unfortunately um but yeah there's there's a lot in here there's probably about i would say anywhere between 10 to 20 adults which is overstocked really for this size of of an aquarium but unfortunately I just can't seem to find any anyone local who would like to take them off my hands so um, the best thing I can do is just try and make the aquarium as good as I can for the volume of crabs that are in here um, and they seem to be thriving because you would have thought that you would they would stop reproducing or the young crablets would get predated upon by the adults but it doesn't seem to be as bad as when I first first got the crabs um, and I'll see if I can if I move this light back over here, I might be able to spot a crablet. They're normally, well, they're all over the place really, but normally when I come around back here, there you can see those little ones just there, tiny. I'll see if I can, there we go. There. See it? There. Absolutely tiny. So, they, yeah, the little ones do great in here. you just got to keep the adults well fed. And, um, yeah, you'll find that everyone will get along. Um, but yeah, they, they're brilliant uh, creatures to keep. And actually, here's a male now. So I can zoom in. Look at that. They're absolutely beautiful. Beautiful crabs. It's a rich orangey yellow that the males get on their backs. The females are much more drab. And you can see on this male's claws how big they are. Um, and they're bright red as well. Beautiful, beautiful creatures, and they have purple, purple legs too. Sorry, I lost my trail of thought there. But yeah, they're brilliant uh, pets to keep. Um, if you do live in the south uh, west of England, be sure to contact me at ben at bigfishlittlefishaquatics.co.uk if you're interested in keeping uh, these, and um, I'm sure we'll be able to sort out. Um, a nice group for you should you wish to to keep them um right so let's move on so we've come to the part of my fish room which is um my biggest passion in fish keeping which is uh, catfish and specifically placostomus catfish laura caraday catfish uh, and then here um, are my zebra plecos i would say these are just over three years old now i have a good mix of male and female i'd say i'd probably have um, I have at least two dominant males um, and one of them is this one and the other one is that one um, I believe these are the females and this is potentially another male up here um, and as you can see the females are always hanging around uh, the dominant males over this past year I've had two trappings unfortunately no no successful spawns from it so I'm just hoping that they are just working things out and within the next few months or so we might might get lucky. Um, I've tried various different things to get them to spawn and they're having, I'm giving them a break at the moment, not doing any, anything to the water. Just gonna let them do their thing for a bit. Um, but I have raised temperature, I've lowered temperature, I have altered pH. Um, and now I'm just leaving them, they're at steady 6.5 pH. Uh, temperature is currently at 28.5. Um, and obviously regular water changes and things like that and the TDS is, is less than 100 parts per million um, but yeah they're they're doing really well um, you can see on this this one here this male if it will let me focus it's just in the dark a bit so it's quite difficult to see but there's been a bit of scrapping going on that's usually a good sign in terms of males getting ready to spawn they start re-establishing territories and dominance and things like that and he's got a few um, scrap scrapping marks I would say is what I call them or uh, just bite marks or rubbing marks um, from the other males uh, or the other male um, and you can see it on this one's tail actually let's see if we can zoom in a bit just looks a bit faded just where they've been um, essentially roughing each other up um, so hopefully in the coming coming months I'll have some real good news to share with you all. Um, but for now they're doing really well. We are getting some progress but no successful spawns yet. Uh, but once once they do I'll make sure I let everyone know um, on here on YouTube. 
Uh, so in this aquarium, this would have been for anyone who's been following for a while. I had my goldfish in here. Essentially, my goldfish just got way too big for this aquarium, um, and it just wasn't fair to keep them in here. Like the aquarium is is forty uh, US gallons, but um, it's just quite a shallow aquarium, and it just didn't seem fair for um, fish to be kept. Uh, the goldfish should I say to be kept in in, in such a shallow aquarium uh, they're designed mainly for pleco or catfish um, because they don't need uh, the height it's all about surface area uh, but in here are my L398 and I'm gonna have to apologize it's looking a bit murky at the moment um, and this always happens when I feed um, courgette and I, it's, uh, it's been the Christmas period at the moment as I'm filming and essentially I've just left it in there for uh, uh, probably a day too long um, and this is the result that you get you get murky murky water uh, don't need to worry about it when it happens for anyone who does do it give it a um, couple of weeks it'll go naturally um, and obviously if you do a water change it will it'll naturally naturally go as well so there's only three fish in here um, and it's a male and two females and you can see the male sticking his tail out here let's see if we can zoom in you can tell it's the male because he's got his uh, odontal growth on his um, caudal peduncle uh, so those spines essentially you can see on his tail when they get really thick it's when they're ready to start spawning I have had three spawns from these um, however, each time the eggs have been infertile, unfortunately. Um, so, had no fry from them, but here's hoping that 2024 is their year. Um, they're quite a small um, Loricaridae catfish, uh, or Panaculus, that is their family. And um, these are about, I would say, 12 centimeters in length. The male is, anyway. The females are probably about 10 centimeters in length and you can see there's a female just waiting outside of this cave um, so I'm expecting any day soon these guys to start courting again and hopefully get some eggs um, and hopefully this time uh, they will be fertile um, but yeah they're really beautiful fish uh, they're wood eating catfish so we've got uh, driftwood in here various types of driftwood for them to chew on which is what you see on the bottom there a lot of that brown stuff that's where they've been gnawing on wood um, and uh, yeah they're really peaceful um, they're very peaceful with each other to be fair and it may be because I've got a male and two females and they've just got so much space that they don't really need to squabble um, but yeah they're uh, really peaceful from what I've seen from a Loricaridae catfish most Loricaridae catfish are quite territorial especially with their own kind um, but no these seem to be um, seem to be a uh, okay so next up is my oh do you know what? i really need to scrub this outside of this glass i apologize i need to clean the front of the glass off it's got a bit dirty with some watermarks and things like that so i do apologize for for you viewers um so in here is another panaculus loricardo catfish this is my l397 um in here i've got seven catfish i have four males to three females this is one of the males here if i zoom in it's very similar to the 398s the panaculus tanke uh, you will see that let me get a torch so we've got a torch so you can see on the tail here of this male the odontal growth on the caudal peduncle again getting quite thick this guy's a real big big male i've got two very big males um, and then the other two are slightly smaller um, for a quite a small Loricaridae they're very tall catfish and hopefully if I can get some footage of them backing out I will do so you can get a real feel for the shape of uh, the 397s uh, when they're fully mature these are coming up to two years old had absolutely no spawning action at all from this group they don't seem to be interested in spawning at least at the moment um, hopefully in the uh, 2024 you know we might get some luck from them but at the moment they're just doing their thing hiding out in here and you can see on this 
this one here this is a one of the smaller males um, that's, that's there's the other larger male actually you can see his tail their tails normally have these long little uh, I'm going to call them scoots or little strands coming off the edge edge of the ends of the tail and this male has uh, had a bit of a uh, run in with one of the other males and his are now missing where he's lost lost them but they'll grow back um, they don't seem to be too territorial considering that there's seven of them in here and there's four males I imagine in the uh, coming months I might need to dwindle down the male count but for now they seem to be um, doing just fine I'm um, just keeping an eye on aggression really more than anything and in here this these three this is the girls so they've all just bunched together so these are all the females and a way of telling a female of other than uh, belly size but if you take a look at this one here here we go I'll zoom in you'll see her caudal peduncle is completely bare in terms of no odontal growth let's see if we can get the light on it there you go yeah so no odontal growth on there really smooth looking uh, yes that's a lovely female she's very fat it might be food hopefully it's gravid um, these are big eaters and because there's so many in here I need to make sure that they're all getting food so just keep an eye on their weight they don't seem to be putting on too much as the other female and then there's the th third one up here they don't seem to be getting too big in terms of fat I did have a fat male a couple of months ago and we had to stop feeding for a week just to make sure he didn't get bloated um, but other than that no these these are doing really good they eat courgette they eat uh, cucumber they eat green beans they eat um, sweet potato or if you're watching for across the pond in America yams um, and they also get various types of sinking tablets spirulina wafers and things like that and that's the same for the 398s uh, they get the same diet as the 397s and uh, the 397s are also a wood-eating catfish hence the various bits of driftwood we have in there for them to nibble on as well so here's the uh, last of the pleco tanks on the tour so in here i have uh 134 which is plecotia compter or commonly known as the leopard frog pleco so we've got a couple of males that generally sit here so here's one male here's the second male hiding around the back and the female is usually over here uh, let's see if i can get the light on her there we go there she is See if I can zoom in. Camera does not seem to want to zoom in today. There's the female. And very similar with the uh, Panaculus, and the best way to sex um, these fish I have found is by their uh, uh, caudal peduncle males get uh, odontal growth it's not as obvious as the panaculus but if I zoom in here and again apologies very murky courgette has been in this aquarium um, if I zoom in here you can just see odontal growth on the caudal peduncle on that male and then if I can get the light on this one you might pick it up slightly uh, these males have been scrapping lately because we've had uh, a couple of spawns from them again eggs unviable um, so it was their first couple of spawns so I'm expecting within the next a uh, few months to hopefully get a bit more action from them and actually get a successful spawn but other than um, that they're doing really well these guys are omnivores so they get um, similar to what I feed my panaculus so a lot of the courgette um, and cucumber and things like that um, but they also will get meaty foods as well such as budworm and other bits like that um, now the other fish in this aquarium, or the other pleco in this aquarium, living with them, they do so very well and I believe it's what helps trigger these to spawn, having that activity going on. 
um, is my L519, so they're an ancestress and they're relatively new to the hobby. Um, and uh, my male is at the back here. Let's see if we can get a good zoom in. Sharp. This courgette has just made a right mess in this aquarium. But you can see the male there, he's got his bushy nose. Ancestor is commonly known for having bristle noses or bushy nose. And he's got their honeycomb pattern. Um, and these have spawned twice um, in the past couple of months and up in this breeder box uh, are the fruits of their spawns and you can really get a good feel for how these fish look so if I just zoom in they're having a courgette at the moment so again doesn't help with the murky water but there's a couple in well there's probably about I'm gonna say just over 20 in here four of which came from the first spawn and that's the slightly larger one you can see in the picture there um, and then the other 20 came from the second spawn and they are all doing really well they eat a lot of courgette a lot of cucumber and they have sinking pellets as well um, the larger ones they're about a month old the slightly smaller ones are about two weeks old at this point they got a little bit of wood in there with them to help them with their uh, development and helping get that bacteria in their stomachs working and things like that and um, yeah so hopefully over the next coming coming months we'll be able to document how these how these little fellas grow and um, when they're old enough they'll be moved on and sold but until then um, yeah, so the 519s have spawned in here. There's there's actually five 519s in here. Um, and I've put the lights on bright, unfortunately, so they're all petrified. Um, but there's a female there. Does not help having murky water, apologize. Female in there, so there's essentially four females, one male. Um, yeah, and they do really well. Okay, on to the next tank. So the last fish on the tour today uh, are living in with some of my cherry shrimp. And these are my wood catfish. So I have two different species in here. I have the honeycomb um, and the ninja. Uh, honeycombs have bred multiple times. I did a video probably at the start of 2023. Um, but unfortunately, I just cannot get the fry to live past one month. Feeling baby brine shrimp, um, crushed up flake things like that to try and get them get them to a sturdy size but once it gets to about a month I just have mass die die off so I've actually stopped trying to breed them it just didn't seem right um, if anyone who's watching has any ideas as to um, what they would feed or what they do feed any of their honeycomb or wood catfish that would be really helpful when they're young uh, because I can get them to spawn they're very prolific they'll spawn like clockwork but actually getting them to um, have the fry grow out, which is obviously the hardest part, um, that seems to be um, uh, not happening at the moment. So if anyone has any ideas, I'll be very uh, welcome to them. Um, this tank's looking a bit like tea stain at the moment, that's because I've got a bit of driftwood up here, just it's been floating in there for two months now. Um, and uh, it's just releasing a lot of tannins in the water. But to actually show you these fish, they're really good at coming out to eat. So I'll just get some bloodworm and uh, you'll be able to get a look at them. So let's pop the bloodworm in. Um, oh, I forgot they're in with my alien better. And there he is, coming up to get some, get some food. Kind of keeps himself to himself in here. Um, so pop the bloodworm in, they usually are out by now, so, and today isn't their normal feeding day to be fair, so they're probably just like, what's going on? Um, so we'll just get some bloodworm in, you can see here's a ninja cat, uh, honeycomb catfish are out now, they're like little torpedoes in the water, the ninja cats are sizably larger than the honeycombs, but they all get on really well, never have any issues with them. At first the ninjas were quite territorial to each other but 
once they establish their hierarchy you don't seem to have any any really any squabbles really I would say so if I just get the last bit of bloodworm in and I'll just stand back a bit so yeah they like to actually eat from the surface especially the honeycombs I've noticed they're definitely much more surface feeding fish uh, the ninjas are much more happy to just eat um, from the bottom there's four ninjas in here, there's five honeycombs interestingly the ninja cats despite their size they do not care about my um, cherry shrimp I'm sure they would eat the shrimplets if they found them um, but in in the main adults are completely left alone and especially this big big beefy ninja cat here they just as long as they're well fed I have not seen them once even attempt to eat one of the shrimp yeah the beautiful fish honeycombs have got a really lovely pattern on them especially they're probably my favorite wood catfish is the honeycomb and um, this is a, a male if anyone who who cares to know if you see here the anal fins pointed like a live bearer like a guppies uh, that's a male anal fin I'll see if I can find a female that's another male um, if another female comes past I'll try and catch catch the footage if not essentially the female's fin just looks like a normal anal fin it's just a fan um, and it's the same for the ninja cats as well uh, this one swimming around here is a male uh, that one is also a male um, but yeah so that's the uh, last aquarium in the fish room um, I hope you have enjoyed enjoyed the video today it's uh, feeling a bit rusty after not doing one of these videos for a long time I think my last fish room tour was well over a year ago um, so apologies to anyone or everyone who's following um, but I'm uh, gonna try and keep things up again now we're gonna get back into it start sharing some stuff working with my friend Ben at the uh, water garden nurseries to bring you some really interesting content this year hopefully so um, do do make sure you subscribe and um, you know like feel free to add any comments down below ask me any questions or um, just you know just talk about any of your fish or your experiences down below it helps with the algorithm of the channel uh, I really appreciate that support um, but yeah so uh, I hope you have a, a great a great day and I will see you in the next one